the record it says the little cowboy georgie goble accompaniment g autry he has a continuing succession of million selling records highlighted by the second biggest selling song of all time then how the reindeer loved him as they shot it out with the moon Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Rudolph was not one of Autry's favorites. He nearly turned it down. The reason I almost didn't do it was uh, I had three numbers that I was going to record, and uh, my wife, uh, Ina, said, well, uh, Gene, I think that you ought to reconsider that Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Said, uh, everyone likes the underdog, and said, that line in there, they wouldn't let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Said, uh, I think that uh, the kids will like that when he comes to the rescue of Santa Claus. His voice, style, and choice of songs was to make Gene Autry one of the most popular singing stars of all time. He was one hell of a singer. Now, Gene sounds good. And... Uh, he had a way with a song that he knew how to, to sing it. He knew how to sell it. He, to me, he was a great artist. Many of the Gene Autry recordings were to become standards. With the phenomenal success of his first million-selling hit, Silver Haired Daddy of Mine, he becomes the first recording star to have his records labeled gold, symbolizing sales of over one million copies. Other major hits included Tumbling Tumbleweeds, Mexicali Rose, Sioux City Sioux, You Are My Sunshine, Back in the Saddle Again, The Last Roundup, Here Comes Santa Claus, Be Honest With Me, and Peter Cottontail. Two of the 300 recordings Audrey made were designated platinum, indicating sales of over two million. His stardom on records and radio make him a natural for Hollywood and the movies. Autry was to become Hollywood's singing cowboy. No, this is not Autry. But at the same time, another future legend was beginning his movie career. He was rugged and handsome, but singing Sandy, as he was called, couldn't sing. So they used someone else's voice. Hi, Gene. It was the beginning of a new era for the Western movie and the start of a genuine friendship. Well, our trails have crossed uh, and crisscrossed many a time in our careers, both professional and social. I guess you realize that if I could have picked a guitar, that uh, you'd probably still be back in Sepulpa, Oklahoma, tapping that telegraph key. When night is gone, Autry's first starring role in a full-length feature movie was in Tumbling Tumbleweeds. It was the beginning of a long association with Republic Pictures, and Gene Autry, the singing star, becomes Gene Autry, the movie star and cowboy hero. The mold is set, and he emerges as the role model for young and old, clean-cut and strong, honest and fair, loyal, understanding, and above all, courageous. I'm back in the saddle again. Evening. Western singing star of all time. Whatever. For six straight years, from 1937 until World War II, Autry is voted the top Western star in Hollywood. He's up there with Gable, Mickey Rooney, and Shirley Temple in the box office top ten. If you really love me, be honest with me. He makes 93 feature motion pictures for theaters, and the public flocks to see them all, including titles like Public Cowboy No. 1, Springtime in the Rockies, Red River Valley, Mule Train, Guns and Guitars, The Big Show, Back in the Saddle, Gold Mine in the Sky, In Old Monterey, The Old Corral, Melody Trail, and the picture named for Autry's trademark, The Singing Cowboy.
told. Gene Autry was known as the singing cowboy, and deservedly so. His songs gave his pictures an added special dimension. The songs he chose enhanced the storyline and blended with the action. His voice was rich and pleasing, and his style uniquely his own. Well, Gene had a, a voice that everybody uh, associated with. I associated with him, and I liked his singing, and, and uh, I think I was just like everybody else. Many of the title songs from Autry films also became favorite Western classics on records. But as in all good cowboy films, the main ingredient of a Gene Autry picture was the good guys and the bad guys. The excitement appealed to little boys and even little girls. Well, every Saturday afternoon, uh, I'd take my quarter, which was basically my weekly allowance, and I'd go to the, the movie house and spend the whole afternoon watching Gene doing his thing and would spend watch it four or five times. It's definitely a pillar in the myth of the West, you know, and uh, the modern cowboy is as we play him today, I think Gene had a great deal of influence on John Wayne and, and Roy Rogers, and you know, they were the guys that uh, developed the image of the cowboy that we knew. time great stunt coordinator and doubled in many of Autry's films was four-time world champion cowboy Yakima Kanuck. They keep running you drag and you hang on and turn loose. Um, hang the front end and then go to the back end. But everything was done on the run. chased the bad guys and he fought them he outrode them and outshot them and although the stunts were difficult and dangerous but I got bumped up a couple of times he did many of them himself now uh, there was a lot of things that I uh, didn't do I didn't uh, do turnovers of uh, state coaches wagons and things like that but uh, a lot of the fast mounts like a crouper mount or maybe a running stirrup mount, I made those, and I did a lot of my own chases, and uh, I did a lot of my own fights. Gene Autry fought for good and justice, no matter what size the bad guys were. How much is that Mesa City bunch paying you for this double cross? I'll answer that question sometime when we're alone. An audience doesn't bother me any. <laughs> You can swing the guy at a certain angle in the camera and never touch him. And it looks better than if you do hit him. Fighting the tough guys was part of every movie western. And one of the bad guys Autry fought was a young actor whose real name was Leonard Sly, first known in films as Dick Weston. Later, when Autry had a contractual problem with his studio, this actor got his chance at stardom. Became highly successful as Roy Rogers, but when Dick Weston was the bad guy, Autry fought and beat him fair and square. I didn't intend to use the gun anyway. You'd have a, a fight in it, a short fight in it. And of course, uh, Gene being the lead in the picture, I think he whipped me. Gene and Roy became the most popular cowboy singing stars of all time. You all right, Buck? Oh, my right arm is sprained a little and my ribs stove in. How's your throat? My throat's all right, what? Let's show you sing. Sing? Yeah, sing. Yodelay! I had a group called the Sons of the Pioneers and we did some background music for him and uh, 
of course, we were at the same studio for I don't know how many years. I was there 14 years, and I don't know how many years Gene was there, but uh, we've known each other for a long, long time. I'm back in the saddle again. Of the Autry songs gave his pictures their own tremendous following. Deep within my heart lies a melody, a song of old San Antonio, where in dreams I live with a memory beneath the Success sun. as a radio, recording, and motion picture star would bring other rewards endorsements of products. Merchandising of toys, t-shirts, cat pistols, and comic books. And sometimes the fans got carried away. Come on, girls, let's get his Fans followed him everywhere, but for the unfortunate kids who couldn't, he would often visit them. Good deeds like this help make the Gene Autry name a household word. Hey, it's Bragmaculture, Mother Eight, Terra Flamia. You is for Ute, the backbone of the nation. T is for television, that's good too. R is for Evolva, highest caliber. Why is for you and you and you the smartest thing to do is to vote for Audrey, vote for Audrey. The name Gene Autry becomes a household word, not only because he is a popular movie star, but also because he is the only one to use his actual, real name as the character he played in most every one of his pictures. They used my name because I was well known in radio and uh, by my records. Chasing the runaway wagon, saving the heroine, Winning the West was part of every film, and like in his own real life, good had to defeat evil and bad. Come on, young'un. Gene Autry was a daring and exciting cowboy. He did everything the fans expected of him, and they were legion and loyal. They flocked to the theaters by the thousands. For the kids, Saturday matinees were a must. It was the lifestyle of the times, and cowboy stars like Gene Autry were their heroes. Autry introduced another element into his movies, which the fans enjoyed, the lovable sidekick who brought comedy relief to the story. The first was Smiley Burnett. I'd like to be a stuntman like you. I can do anything on the horse that anybody else can do. Can you let the cooper mount? Well, sure. Well, what is that? Lester Smiley Burnett, known as Frog Milhouse in most of the films, was working at a radio station in Tuscola, Illinois in 1933 when Autry discovered him. Oh, shucks, I can do that. That's a bit. The multi-talented musician, funny man, and singer made 61 features with Autry and became a lifelong friend. He was funny. I used him as a stooge when I used to play theaters. I would have him, and then uh, he, could do, he, he could do so many things. So when I first came to Hollywood, I brought him out here with me. And uh, in the first picture, they, they were hesitant about having a, a funny guy or a sidekick in there with me, but anyway, I talked them into it. Well, after they saw him uh, do those uh, pratfalls and uh, slapstick comedy-like, why, uh, uh, the kids would laugh and roar, and then he became so well-established why they couldn't uh, 
uh, afford to get him, let him go. After the war, Smiley had made other contractual commitments, became unavailable, and a new sidekick, Pat Buttram, emerged in the Autry pictures. With Gene, uh, the sidekick just uh, would have to make up things because the writers didn't know where we would be shooting the scene, and so we'd have to make up a lot of it as we went along, the fight stuff we'd do and uh, fall in the water trough if there wasn't a cactus bush handy and things like that. There's two things about you that I cotton to. The way you don't stampede so easy and this horse of yours. <laughs> Comedy, action, and adventure were definitely part of the B Western. But there was also romance. Hey, what's the idea? I had to stop the runaway. Except for a few early pictures, Gene Autry was never seen actually kissing a girl on the screen. The camera would usually cut away. Help me out! Oh, oh, Dolores, my smelling salts, I feel faint. Remember how the prince woke up to Sleeping Beauty? He had to kiss her. No. Go on, it might work. Beautiful actresses appeared as leading ladies in Autry films, including Gail Davis and Anne Rutherford, who later became the heartthrob in some of Mickey Rooney's movies. All of the leading ladies in his films, which also included June Story and Barbara Britton, as well as Virginia Gray and Lynn Roberts, were not there for decoration, even though they often needed his help. They were independent women who had definite functions and were strong characters who usually gave Gene a hard time as he was chasing and courting them. Oh. Oh. Don't say it. Don't say what? Are you all right? Oh, this is getting a mud pack the hard way. Other leading ladies included Adele Mara, Ilana Verdugo, Sheila Ryan, Faye McKenzie, and Ann Miller, who starred in the movie Melody Ranch. Ann was the love interest, and it was expected that Autry would win her and seal it with a kiss. Melody Ranch? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Slim. If it's for Gene, you'll find him out at the corral. Well, it's for you, Miss Shelton. Long distance. Once again, because of the Autry hero image with his fans and the continuing controversy, the kiss, which was photographed, was never actually seen on the screen. It's perfectly simple, Tommy. I'm very much in love with Jean, but I'm afraid that he doesn't even know that I exist. I know it now, Julie. Well, then, why don't you say something about it? What do you mean, why don't I say something? All right, get set. That sounded exactly like a kiss. They took one whole morning to shoot that, that scene. One whole morning just for a kiss. It couldn't be too sexy, and it had to be wholesome, and yet it had to be sweet, and it couldn't leave lipstick marks on his face, and it had to be something that was staged so that millions of women would not resent him kissing a woman instead of his horse. <laughs> I'm back in the saddle again. Would have none of that. But the horse was a very important part of the horse opera, and Champion was a hero in his own right. He was always Autry's co star and played an important part in beating the bad guys. intelligent and very fast. There wasn't a truck with wood-paneled station wagon that Champion couldn't outrun.
Actually, there were three champions used in the Autry movies and on television. Far away the ranks of the boss in the sky. Other horses were never a challenge. Most movie stars had one stand-in when they made a picture. Champion had four. The first champion lived 23 years. There was a special bond between man and horse. In motion pictures, promotion has always been vital to success, and no B-Western had been produced with a bigger budget or released with more publicity or fanfare than Autry's. To promote his pictures, he would make personal appearances at theaters and rodeos all over the country. He enjoyed the personal contact with the fans. One of the rodeo world's best trick ropers was Monty Montana. One good thing, I told him this, I said, Gene, you stick to your singing and I'll stick to my roping, so we, we haven't been competitors. Autry's pictures were popular all over the world, and he had as many fans overseas as he did in this country. His personal appearance tour in Europe just before World War II attracted hundreds of thousands of his fans in London, Glasgow, Cardiff, and other cities in England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, where in Dublin alone, 750,000 crowded the streets to welcome him. Returning to London with his Western show for a triumphant appearance in 1953, he was seen by one of his most famous fans. It's one of those impressions that just blew you away at the time, you know, it just knocked me out. And I always remember it just going, ooh, south of the border, down to Mexico. And he, has, he had his leg on a horse over the thing. I mean, I was eight years old and wanted to be a cowboy. Still do. Riding the range once more. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor ends Autry's dream of peace, and it stills the bells of freedom. America was at war, and the man who fought for good on the screen is to fight for his country in real life. In 1942, one day after completing his movie, Bells of Capistrano, Autry enlists in the United States Army Air Corps. He could have had a deferment, and he could have been given safe duty as an entertainer in special services. Instead, he goes to flight school and becomes a non-commissioned officer in the Air Transport Command. He flies dangerous missions delivering planes, arms, and fuel in the China-India-Burma theater of war. It was tough, important, high-risk duty. He survives another cliffhanger. With the war over, the peace won and freedom's bells again ringing. Soldier Gene Autry returns to resume his career as the movie cowboy hero. His first post-war film is Sioux City Sioux. Gene Autry is back in the saddle again, and he continues where he left off. He would make five more films for Republic, and then, in 1947, would move to Columbia Pictures, where his movies would be produced by his own company, Gene Autry Productions. That gun gives you a little advantage, Autry. Maybe this will make us even. The legend was to continue and grow with new songs and more exciting adventure and action. Autry had a wonderful sense of humor, which would show up in practical jokes off the screen and on. Comedy was an integral part of Autry pictures, and it wasn't only the sidekicks who had funny bits. Autry had a few of his own. 
had a great sense of humor and was the greatest straight man on lines. He really enjoyed working with comedians. Jimmy Durante would just have to open his mouth when they did Melody Ranch, and Gene would fall down. He was a great sense of humor. He has a rocking chair for a man and his lady fair. Driving along, singing a song. That's Gene. In most of his films, Autry chose subjects that were of concern to him personally. His pictures would speak strongly about issues of the time. The rights of Indians, unemployment, the Dust Bowl, the harnessing of power. Their own homes are already underwater, but they're fighting to save the rest of the valley. If you'll stand by just a minute, I'll try to get one of the workers to say a few words. also championed the rights of minorities and the underprivileged. Miss Abby wants us to talk about American history. I'm an American. You mean Mexican. Just a minute, Lefty. Your friend Pedro has the right to speak here, too. Yeah, it's a free country. Let the new kid talk. Pedro's not new here, Lefty. He may be new to this school or to this ranch, but so are you. And he has the right to be here just the same as you and I have. Sure, here in America, so am I. We were born here, so were our parents. If you trace history far enough back, Lefty, you'll find that some of our ancestors were new here, too. Like Pedro. A man named Columbus discovered America with three ships. He was new here. But the Indians were here ahead of him. That's right, Lefty. Historians say the Indians drifted from Asia across the Bering Sea. They were the first Americans, Lefty. And after the Indians came settlers, even before your family and mine. The early Spaniards brought something to the West we can never forget. Not just horses and cattle. They did bring horses and cattle, but they also brought their missions and their faith. That's history, Lefty. So stand up and shake hands with a fellow whose ancestors date back further than ours. Shake hands with Pedro Gonzalez. was to become a monument of courage, strength, honesty, and fairness. It was to be his style off and on the screen. He was magical. He was just magic. I mean, clear up the time they recorded Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. His character, charisma, and style on and off the screen make him one of a kind. Well, when they made Gene Autry, they threw away the pattern. There's not another one like him anywhere in the world. I've never met a more generous human being, not only with his time, his talent, his money, but everything. He was honored by the entertainment community by being one of only two individuals ever awarded four stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. They are for his achievements on radio, recognition for the millions of records he sold, superstardom in movies, and for his long career in television. He joins other immortals in Hollywood with the prestigious footprint ceremony at Grauman's Chinese Theater. And the honor is also bestowed on champion. Never mind what might have been. May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. You have achieved the Singing Cowboys measure of success and awards and tributes have often honored the Autry name. They are all revered and cherished, but one stands tall among the many. Here's a dear one. An unknown Gene Autry left a small town in Oklahoma to seek fame and fortune. Now a town in Oklahoma changes its name and proudly calls itself Gene Autry. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're surrounded by 35,000 people who have come to the town of Berwyn to witness a unique event. The changing of the name of Berwyn, Oklahoma to Gene Autry, Oklahoma. Every day along about evening When the sunlight's beginning to fade he knows he must explore other ventures outside the area of performing. In the mid-40s, he buys his first radio station. It is the beginning of the Gene Autry business empire. During 1940, 41, 42, I was making about $600,000 a year doing all those things. And here, I became a tech sergeant at about $155 a month. So I said, when I get out of here, I'm going to get into a business that uh, I don't have to uh, appear myself in where I'll have an income. Suppose that I couldn't sing or something happened that I'd be disabled, so I'm going into business. So the first thing I did was buy a radio station in Arizona. There's the dawning. Although radio station ownership is to become an integral part of his life, his movies continue to attract large audiences into theaters. He is still a top box office draw. But Autry being a man of vision would be the first motion picture star to make movies expressly for television. In spite of warnings by motion picture executives that television was a danger to the movie industry, Autry's TV company, Flying A Productions, would make 91 movies for TV under the title, The Gene Autry Show. They were tremendously successful and were some of the first TV films produced in color. They maintained the high standard of Autry's theatrical films, filled with songs, action, and adventure. At the same time Autry was making television movies, his company, Flying A Productions, developed and produced other TV series in which Autry did not appear. They included Annie Oakley, which starred Gail Davis, Range Rider with Jock Mahoney and Dick Jones, Buffalo Bill Jr., also starring Dick Jones, and 26 episodes of The Adventures of Champions. Autry's hard-riding Western star image and musical talents continue to spell success in movies and TV. For 16 years, he stars in a weekly radio show called Melody Ranch, which also was the title of one of his movies. But off the screen, the singing cowboy was to become the corporate cowboy, as the empire expands with the acquisition of radio stations in major cities throughout the United States. With a fellow named Bob Reynolds, we bought uh, this station, KMPC. All of his life, Gene Autry has been a communicator, as a telegrapher, then as a radio, record, and movie star. Now he is to communicate through his ownership of radio and television stations. I built uh, a TV station in uh, Phoenix and one in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, then later, why, uh, Golden West Broadcasters, we bought this station, uh, uh, KTLA Channel 5. Gene Autry was always an avid baseball fan. Now his empire is about to take another step forward as he would become the owner of a Major League Baseball team. Gene Autry becomes the owner of the California Angels. It's like a gift from heaven. He takes an active part in building and developing the team that would take the field for the first time against the Baltimore Orioles in 1961. Perhaps uh, one of the great thrills I think that uh, I ever had uh, during that first game, there were two on and uh, Big Krzyzewski hit one out of the park, which was a, a home run. The final score was actually uh, uh, seven to two. I guess that, that was just about as big a thrill as I've ever had in baseball. Up 
Godfrey is a knowledgeable and popular owner. He develops and buys for his team some of baseball's finest players. A few are destined for baseball's Hall of Fame. He's a very conscientious man uh, and a man that has had a life as a star and a man that had a life as working with the public and a man that, that worked on the road constantly day after day so he understands the everyday grind of 150 to 200 days a year. Uh, so he's very understanding uh, of the players, the lifestyle we have, and of the game. I think he's a tremendous human being, uh, definitely so. Um, I, think, I think he cares about people. I think he cares about people's feelings. And, you know, when, when you get respect from a man of Gene Autry's stature, uh, that's just saying it all in one word right there. He's a real cowboy, meaning that his, his word is his bond. His handshake is a contract. Autry attends most every home game, watching from his private box, keeping score of every play and rooting for his team just like any fan in the stand. He is often accompanied by special guests and always by his wife, Jackie, who is as avid a fan as Autry himself. Jackie Autry shares the enthusiasm and the dream. She is as knowledgeable about the game as she is supportive and helpful to Autry in his many faceted empire. She has given him new love. She found in the legend a very special person. He's a very kind, sweet, tender man, uh, very easy to live with, very easy to get along with, and he's a lot of fun to be with. And um, although we had a wonderful relationship when we were dating, I think uh, after we got into our marriage, um, I realized that he was a very special person and still is a very special person. Inspiring, the legend continues. To me, he's always been an idol because, you know, uh, here's a man who started out like us, nothing, and, and, and made himself into what today amounts really to Horace Greeley's Go West, Young Man, Go West. There's a gold mine. Gene Autry rules his golden empire from an office surrounded by the artifacts he treasures. There are mementos of his illustrious cowboy career. Priceless artworks by Frederick Remington and Charlie Russell. There'll be clover just for you. It was the code of the West that was to mold Gene Autry, the image and the man. The cowboy code. The cowboy must never shoot first, hit a smaller man, or take unfair advantage. He must never go back on his word or a trust confiding in him. He must always tell the truth. He must be gentle with children, the elderly, and animals. He must not advocate or possess racially or religiously intolerant ideas. He must help people in distress. He must be a good worker. He must keep himself clean in thought, speech, action, and personal habits. He must respect women, parents, and his nation's laws. The cowboy is a patriot. May the good Lord Bless and keep you. For decades, he was to have love and respect from the common man to those in the highest office in the land. Most every U.S. president from the days of Herbert Hoover has invited Gene Autry to be his guest at the White House. Today, today, may your troubles all be small ones and your fortune Ten times ten. They were his friends, and they were fans. They admired him, and they honored him. Over the years, Gene has done more for his country and for his fellow man than just about anyone I know. While he was in the film business, Gene knew that he was serving as a role model for millions of young Americans, and he always strived for the highest standards. Through his career, he used his musical and acting talents to promote decency and human kindness. Gene Autry is still the guy in the white hat. He still pictures himself as riding off into the sunset. However, now he kisses the girl, not the horse. Gene Autry is one of a kind. His impact on the world of entertainment is indelible. His loyalty is true, and his code is his credo. 
Gene Autry the man is Gene Autry the American hero. A very special person who will be an inspiration for generations to come. Gene Autry is the symbol of the American dream. I'm back in the saddle again. Back in the saddle again. Whoopie tie.